All right, uh, in this video, I want to show a quick example of how to do a page object model like format, but for API to calls. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben. I run Loop Software and Testing Services. We do a lot of QA automation for different companies as well as manual testing for different companies. So if you find this useful. Um, okay, so what you're looking at here is a test case. Um, in this case, case, I can post a valid message. It's just to a fake API, so it's not actually going to really, I think, do anything other than echo it back. Um, I can then um, get a response. So let's look quickly at what we're doing. So um, we have a folder called page objects, just for the sake of this example. Um, we can then, you know, F12 into that really quick, and we can see specifically the post call that we're making, um, and then go back. So let's just quickly um, talk through it before we run it. So um, the way that we at Loop think about uh, API calls when it comes to page object models is we try to build them in a way where they can accept different arguments and be reused. And why that's really important is because just like a fill step with a first name or just like a expects uh, data where you're using the same function, the whole value of this is to use the same function over and over again, an API call um, needs that same kind of flexibility. And so if we break down specifically what we're doing here with this API call, uh, we have an argument, the body returns the status. We have the different steps, which in this case is the post and then the status comparison and then the body comparison. And then in this case, we've actually gone even further and we've, we've sort of grabbed a certain ID, like a call response name or something like that. Um, so we broke down the API call into reusable steps, which is important. We'll talk a little about that in a second. Um, it is worth noting before we get much further, by the way, that uh, the uh, API call uses API uh, request context. So if you're going to do this and you're making a class, in this case, we have the class message, uh, API request context. We have this read only API request context. The constructor is request API request context. This dot request uh, equals request. And that's how it actually works. So um, the function itself is await this dot request uh, context dot post. Um, so that's just logistics of how it works. Now, if we're then taking that and looking at what we're actually passing, uh, first we're going to have the base environment, the base URL slash message. Uh, that's going to be based in our different environment um, folders here, which is the .env functionality. That's probably for a different video. Uh, next, you're going to have your headers that are going to be portioned of it. So you have your headers here, and then you have your little JSON string. Now, certainly this could be its own um, object as well, but just for the sake of it, we're not. You even have your sort of bear token, and then uh, data, that's going to be your body argument, status is going to be returned, and call response is going to be returned. So um, if we were to run this at the test level, let's go back to the test level, you can see that we're passing in a couple different arguments. So you have um, your example post, your example post response, and then the expected response. Now, what we're pulling these from are different contexts. So if we go in and we actually then pull um, the actual uh, object here, excuse me, sorry, it's been a bit of a long day. Um, you can see here's my example post, right? So this is a constructor, uh, this dot example post, and the advantage of doing the, of structuring the page object model, we'll call it the way that we have with the API test, is that each test can just pull in its own post body and it can pull in its own response body that it's expecting and it can do a 401. So this allows us to do different kinds of post tests with different kinds of post bodies, different kinds of expect response bodies. Uh, it can do different um, status responses. So let's say we're gonna do a negative test. We can actually um, post a response and then expect an error message and expect a 400 all using the same function. Now, there's arguments to be said whether or not negative and, and positives should be their own functions. We can certainly get into that. Um, but if we look at it, we've given this function the flexibility it needs in order to still be remarkably human readable, right? So even though we have a 400 in that case that we just drilled into, even though it's the same function, 
the the step name is actually going to be slightly different because we're using an argument in the step name which is probably worth a video in itself but the location status is 400 right the, uh, that's going to be dynamic it's going to change it's still going to make it human readable so um at its core that is how to do api uh testing uh, as a page object model it took way too long and way too much research to, to find a good example of this. So I'm hoping that this is kind of a good example and I'm, ho I'm happy to go into more detail if people have questions about stuff like how to um, update some of the JSON and how to do these different components. But um, for this quick video, this is how to take API calls in Playwright and turn them into a, a page object model. Hope you found it useful. Bye.